Hi, I'm Dr. Lucy Bianchi, and with me today I have Dr. RJ Metz from Core Orthopedics. He is their hand specialist and is very good at a variety of things. So he took some time out of his busy schedule to talk with us today about some of the common uh, hand and wrist injuries that both children and adults have, some of the myths, and some of the things that we can do to protect our health and our hands and wrists. Um, just a little background for Dr. Metz. He did go to undergrad in Indiana at Wabash College, did both medical school and residency at Indiana University, and then his fellowship trained from Pitt in Pennsylvania. Um, all right, so thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, well, we love having you. We love doing these informal events and giving our members um, a chance to get some of their questions like talked about. Um, and I think one of the most common uh, ailments that probably our members and probably all people have really is carpal tunnel. Um, so can you share some thoughts about carpal tunnel with us? Absolutely. Uh, the dreaded carpal tunnel. Um, it is not fatal. That's number one that I tell everybody. Not fatal, nobody's ever, di ever died from carpal tunnel, um, but it will mess up your quality of life. And so carpal tunnel at its most basic is pressure on the nerve. Pressure on the nerve that supplies sensation to these three fingers. And some people get numbness when they're doing things. Some people wake up in the middle of the night and just sort of feel like they're they are, their hand is completely asleep. They tell me all the time that I just feel like I don't have any circulation in my hand, and so I have to sort of wake it up. It's not a circulatory problem, as you know, it's a nerve problem, and that nerve just has too much pressure on it. And, and what I reinforce with my patients is that this is something that a lot of people can get taken care of without an operation. With bracing and some exercises, making sure that ergonomically things are good, we could really manage this without, you know, without a knife or without an operation. And so it, it's really nice to sort of let everybody know that, that there is hope for your hands. You know, if they're numb, they, they will come back, I promise. Right, so even though he is a surgeon, surgery's not the first step with, you know, fixing carpal tunnel. You mentioned ergonomics, like these computers that we use and these cell phones yes. that we use, how much of a, of a false carpal tunnel does that create? You know, I think a lot. Um, everybody's working from home. Everybody's working from home now and, and laptop management, desktop management, you know, needs to be sort of in a relaxed position. I like chairs with armrests on them. They're really helpful. You know, when you're doing this for eight hours a day, you know, and mousing, it, it just does not lead to a happy hand and arm. And so that with a little bit of education, we can really get people to have better function. They go, oh yeah, doc, I really sort of feel better and thank you and, and I'll call you when I need you, uh, right. which is great, which is fantastic. Yeah, because you can go on for years and years with occasional issues, correct? Correct, and, and what I tell everybody is, is if I can get you to the point where you can sleep through the night, number one, because that's the most important. If you're not sleeping, then nothing is right. During the day, you have maybe an occasional sort of tingle, or when you do something, you say, oh, that was kind of funny, and then it goes away, then we're done. And whatever we need to do to get there, it is fine. You know, if that's, if that's a brace, if that's stretches, if that's an operation, fine, but not everybody needs that. So let's define like the operation. Like when does someone absolutely have to, and when is the point in which, if you don't get this done, you know, you've killed your nerve? So for a lot of patients that have this sort of persistent symptoms where things just aren't getting better, what I tell them is, uh, let's get a nerve test. Let's see what electrically your nerve looks like because an MRI will tell me what, what that nerve looks like structurally but doesn't tell me about the function of the nerve. And so if that function of the nerve is not good or if that nerve is so damaged that you're starting to lose muscle power, then, then the time for playing around is over. And, and we're gonna to go to the operating room sooner rather than later. Now, it's not, it's not an emergency thing, but it needs to happen in a timely fashion. Otherwise, you continue to lose muscle and those changes are irreversible. And now the surgery's become a heck of a lot easier. It's, it's an outpatient surgery, correct? It is night and day better than it used to be. I have patients that, that come to me for a variety of reasons and have just enormous incisions in their wrists. Look at these things, how did, 
how did you let them do that to you? This is crazy. You know, we've gotten smaller and smaller and smaller, and now with a half inch incision through the camera, we can do this in less than 10 minutes. Wow, that's pretty quick. And then how soon are they expected to get back to activity? I let people do whatever they want to do right away. Oh, well, that's great. So if a surgeon had this, they could get back to surgery. If I had this, I could right. get back to injecting. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, right away with, with a Band-Aid only. Well, that's great. So people can get by for quite a while until these symptoms are just relentless and creating nerve damage and muscle atrophy and so forth, basically. Right. It, there comes a breaking point where you say, listen, I've had enough of this. I got to do something. It's driving me crazy. Absolutely. No problem. Or that it's gotten so bad and you've become a martyr to yourself that the muscle starts dying. That's when I tell people, listen, we got to do this. All right. Well, now we've clarified a few points about carpal tunnel. Um, we're going to move on to other common uh, wrist ailments that I know a lot of our members have had. Um, so let's talk wrist fractures, missed wrist fractures and obvious wrist fractures. Um, one of my favorite, um, I, some of my happiest patients are my wrist fracture patients because we can get them, I can get them back to doing things that they want to do, things that they have to do, working, working out, um, taking care of themselves, taking care of the family, and we do it in a fashion that's, that's timely. Um, my view on wrist injuries is that if I look at the x-ray and things don't look right, or if I talk to the patient and there's more pain than I think is from a simple sprain and the x-rays look totally fine, we're going to investigate it to make sure that we don't miss something because that's, that's the worst conversation to have with the patient is, oh, I'm really sorry. We really missed this. This, I, I never want to have that conversation. And so we're, we're more proactive with wrist injuries uh, to make sure that we handle them appropriately. So what happens if someone does have a missed um, carpal fracture, for example, uh, not because of anything you did wrong or I did right. wrong, they come to us, like they've had pain for six months, maybe nine months. Um, what are some of the complications uh, acutely and down the road from not having it taken care of correctly? You know, I think that is a really good point to emphasize is that pain that persists for months is something that needs to get looked at because the problems with that are that the bone can die, that you can get early arthritis. And, and once that bag of worms is open, then you kind of proceed down this line of, well, you're gonna to have to have an operation. You might have to have a second operation and you're gonna lose a lot of motion. And you're gonna lose a lot of power. And, and those are things that, that are consequences of that simple missed break that can be easily handled in the short term, as opposed to picking up the pieces six, nine, 12 months down the road. Right, sure, yeah, because then that's a lifetime of potential pain that someone may have. Absolutely. Um, what about joints in the fingers? You know, a lot of times I will explain to patients that a lot of the pain that they have, you know, in the joints of their hands is very similar or can be treated very similarly to pain they might have in their knees or pain that they might have in their hips, but what kinds of things can you do um, for a patient of, of mine or someone else's when uh, anti-inflammatories, ice, exercises, you know, when they really have kind of end-stage joint problems in, in fingers and thumbs? So there are a couple options for end-stage arthritis and pain. Um, some of them are injections. Uh, some of them are a little bit of therapy. And then sometimes we have to go to the operating room and it's a reconstruction. And, and the reconstruction sort of depends on the joint that you're talking about, but it runs everything from um, fusing that joint where you take away the motion and then the pain goes away. Um, doing a joint replacement similar to a knee replacement or a hip replacement, or doing a big reconstruction that you change the structure of that joint completely. And it just depends on uh, quality of life and functionality and pain and how all of those factors go into um, the discussion that I have with patients about what is the right answer for them. So when you do like a joint replacement for a finger or a thumb, um, do they last as long as joint replacements for knees and hips? They don't. 
Um, the thumb uh, lasts a pretty long time. The small joints in the hand, sort of here or here into the hand, they last a while and they give a really, really good pain relief. But structurally, they're, they're totally different than knee replacements because knee replacements are a big piece of metal and then a really, really tough plastic piece and then another piece of metal. The hands just aren't like that because they don't need that kind of stress and force. They don't require that. And so a lot of the times the implants that we have are just pieces of silicone and they, they do great for functionality. They bend and they move, but they break, you know, and then you have to redo them. Okay. So it's kind of like a maintenance thing if you're getting a joint replacement for a hand. Correct. But you would hope that you get 10 years, 15 years out of it. And then sometimes you have to redo it again. What kinds of strange diseases have you seen with hands? Oh man, <laughs> hands are hands are crazy. I have uh, patients with too many fingers. I have patients with not enough fingers. I have patients that have all sorts of nail deformities. I have patients that have um, discolored nails. I have patients that have um, kids that have extra thumbs. I have. Um, rheumatoid arthritis patients, lots of autoimmune type injuries, uh, type uh, disorders. It sort of runs the gamut of, of everything that I can see from newborns to 100 year olds and everything in between in terms of ages too. So you do see uh, newborns as well as adults? Correct. Oh, okay. Um, so I did have a patient many years ago that had synaphily mm -hmm. um, at birth. Interestingly, it was missed um, at the hospital and, um, and I looked at him like, huh, <laughs> that doesn't look right. <laughs> it's supposed to be separate. Oh, that actually turned into a number of surgeries for that little one. Uh, some keloids formed, I, if I recall correctly, and it was a lot of surgeries. And, and that was one of the things that I did in my fellowship that we did a lot of was a lot of syndactyly. We worked at a Shriners Hospital and so had these kids from all over Pennsylvania and Ohio and New York that would come. Um, at all different ages and we would have to reconstruct their hands and so that was that was a part of you know everyday life during fellowship and so that's that's one of the things that that we sort of excelled at in our program well that's great had you ever seen um injuries like lost fingers like from a chainsaw or something like that oh yes um my my big public service announcements are in the winter it's okay to clean your lawnmower and in the summer, it's okay to clean your snowblower. And, ah, and the two should sense. not mix. <laughs> right? That's probably good advice. So now, um, is your skill set include like putting the finger, the lost finger back on? That's something that you do as well? Yes. It um, just sort of with trends in, in hand surgery, uh, we used to put everything back on and it would live, but people didn't really like it because it hurt work good and stiff mm -hmm. and then so then we'd have to take it off um, so there's sort of the the indications have gotten smaller um, but yeah we still occasionally have to put a finger back on and then is that like a surgery that you would do um, in concert with a plastics person or is that something that you're able to do um, just on your own uh, usually I do that by myself mm -hmm. okay all right well good and then I actually had a lot of adult patients um, in the past with missing fingers and they seem to be absolutely fine with it. None of them ever seem to have phantom pain Correct. or anything. Almost no problems. Um, but which doesn't seem to be the case with legs. Correct. <laughs> there is a big disparity, yes. Oh, well, thank goodness for our hands then. <laughs> now, is every um, lump or bump on a hand a problem? No. Um, I feel like sometimes that's half my practice. You know, people come in, they have lumps and bumps. Hey, can you look at this? Tell me what it is. Do I need to worry about it? Mm -hmm. um, and, and the easiest thing for me, just because I've seen thousands and thousands of them is, hey, let's look at it. Let, I have an ultrasound in the office. We can get an ultrasound of it. I can tell you what I think that it is. Um, and if we need to go further or not, if we need to get more imaging or it can be left alone or if we need to go to the operating room. And so that's, that's something that just has become a part of you know, my practice um, at, at both of our offices. Right. Well, I think that um, with the aesthetic market just growing and growing, people are taking a closer look at really all of their body parts and wanting them to 
look perfect, you know, including their hands. Absolutely. Um, and one of the things from, from an aesthetic standpoint is um, I take pride in how my incisions look, how people heal, because everybody has their hands out all the time and, and people will notice those things. And if you, um, as a surgeon, if you leave bad incisions, that's your calling card and people won't, won't come to you. And so I, I sort of take pride in my aesthetically pleasing uh, incisions and closures and scars uh, to, to limit that, you know, limit keloids as much as possible. Right. So you can like make a keloid not happen even in someone who's prone to them. Correct. It is, it is a full core press. Um, and that's, that's one of the questions that I ask patients before any operation. Do you have any skin healing problems? Do you have any keloid problems? Has anybody in the family ever had that? And so that's, that's at the forefront of my mind um, with every patient discussion for surgery. Well, that's great because I know a lot of our members are very concerned with, you know, aesthetic outcomes um, and sometimes are bothered by, you know, scars or have discomfort from scars that they weren't expecting. Um, Absolutely. One more thing that I wanted to, to touch on, just because we do also see that quite a bit, um, are just the average wrist sprain. Not a fracture, not a lump or bump, but a wrist sprain. And, and what can be done acutely from, from your mindset and what we should do if that just doesn't seem to get better, which becomes more of a chronic issue. Right, um, uh, again, something that I feel like I see a lot of people come in and uh, I really hurt my wrist six weeks ago and I've been wearing a brace and things just aren't getting better. Um, it, I think bracing and icing is fantastic advice in the acute setting. It really helps with decreasing the swelling, pain goes down both from icing as well as bracing and, and then people can start to sort of move the wrist around and really get back to doing what they want to do in their normal life. If that doesn't happen at three weeks, four weeks, then we need to start investigating a little further. Is there something more? Is there a missed carpal fracture like we talked about? Is there another injury that needs further treatment or even formal therapy to help get back to doing what you want to do, to having a normal life? So really like a wrist sprain shouldn't be chronically bothering you for a month upon month upon month. Should not. That suggests that maybe it's something else. It's that, no longer a wrist sprain. <laughs> so, correct, and and that and that manifests itself into wrist stiffness and joint stiffness, loss of power, and and those are the things that that really need to get addressed. All right. Well, that is very helpful. Um, are there any supplements that you advise uh, patients to use to keep their joints and their ligaments and muscles and bones healthy? You know, a, a lot of people know about uh, glucosamine and chondroitin, which has been out for a long time. Um, I'm a big proponent of collagen. I'm a big proponent of uh, natural uh, turmeric and black pepper pills. Um, I think that, th that those sort of oral supplements, in addition to just continued lotion and making sure that you really take care of your hands and making sure that you use sunscreen when you're out because um, those those spots come up and age spots happen and and those are things that that need to get taken care of so if you're proactive and you really make sure that you that you take good care of your hands and you can avoid those problems later on well that sounds great all right well i think that wraps it up for today i think we've hit the major common wrist and hand injuries and if our audience has more questions please bring them forward. We can always ask the doctor to come back and talk with us uh, about other injuries, other issues, other aesthetically pleasing things we can do for our hands and wrists. Right. Um, but thank you very much for joining us thank today. Thank you so much for having me again. Bye-bye, we'll see you soon.